Let's talk about wide receivers that you should start or sit in week 14 of the fantasy football season. For a lot of us, this is the last week before the fantasy playoffs. So these matchups are uber important. Unfortunately, there are so many teams on by. We've got a little by Mageddon. Why NFL? Why do you do this on week 14? I don't understand. We have the Ravens, Broncos, Texans, Colts, Patriots, and Commanders on by. So for a lot of you guys who need to get into the playoffs, You'll have Nose Flowers or Cortland Sutton or Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Michael Pittman, Pop Douglas, or Terry McLaurin. But don't worry, in today's video, we'll go through all 13 matchups. There are 26 teams in play, starting off with Thursday Night Football, Packers at Lions. 51 and a half point over under, by the way, that is the highest over under of the week. So we should see a good amount of fancy points in this divisional matchup. And this division is still up for grabs, technically. If the Packers win this game, I mean, they have a chance to still win the NFC North, as crazy as that sounds, with their current record. Uh, the Lions are our favorite, obviously, at home by three and a half points. Jaden Reed is the only wide receiver that I feel comfortable starting in Green Bay. He's actually the wide receiver 10 on the season. The issue with Jaden Reed is there's a ton of boom and bust games. But with all of the names on by this week, I mean, I, I just don't imagine that 80 to 90% of people have a better option than Jaden Reed this week, right? If all of those guys were back into my rankings and there were no buys, Jaden Reed would be more of a spot start given your options. But the amount of people on buy, I do think you need to start on my wide receiver 19. At least you can throw on the Lions. Um, you know, we have seen that at least throughout, you know, this entire year. In fact, Jaden Reed faced the Lions in week number nine. He had five catches, 113 yards, so he's already had some good success against his team. But every other wide receiver for the Packers, I don't feel comfortable starting. Romeo Dobbs, good news for him. He is back, you know, from that concussion. Great for the Packers. Bad for this wide receiver core. It makes everything else way too confusing. I would avoid it. Now, on the opposite side of the ball, of course, you're going to start Amon Ross St. Brown. You guys know that. The wide receiver, two in fantasy football this year. There's no way you can sit him. Here's what's weird is he was on a little streak there. Um, he was on a streak of about nine touchdowns uh, in nine games, right, in, in a row. And in the last two weeks, no touchdowns for two straight games. So that's been a little bit interesting to see, but at least the floor has been a little bit more, you know, reliable with seven targets in the last two games. Either way, you, you're still going to put him into your lineups. Jamison Williams is a spot start. You know, he's the definition of boom bust. We've seen that each and every year, right? I, I'll read you off his past five or six games in fantasy football. You ready for this? Week six, 17 PPR points. The next week, 0 0.6. All right, the next time he plays, 8.3. Then 22 points, great. Then 11, well then nine. It's just, there's this constant boom bust with him. So again, if you wanna infuse your lineup with some upside in a really fun divisional game, I think Jameson Williams is one of the best names to do that with. But if you're looking for a consistent safe floor, he's probably not the guy you wanna chase this week. All right, moving on to the start of the 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time slate of games. We've got Jets, Dolphins, two teams that we thought would be, you know, kind of in the playoff picture. I guess technically the Dolphins are still in it, but let's be honest, the Dolphins are, they're not going to get into the playoffs at this point, and the Jets certainly aren't. Now, here's the good news, I guess, I guess, right, at this point. Aaron Rodgers, um, according to the interim head coach, Jeff here, Jeff Ulbrich, my name's Jeff, uh, they say he's going to remain the starter Aaron Rodgers, that is. Aaron Rodgers will remain the starter here in week number 14. The reason I say I guess that's good news is because Aaron Rodgers is playing so poorly. I don't actually know if Tyrod Taylor's a downgrade at this point. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. You know, one of the best careers of quarterbacks all time. But, I mean, Aaron Rodgers was super inaccurate last week. It's not the first game either. You know, making silly decisions and just throwing inaccurate targets to his wide receivers. But the good news for both Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams is these are guys who both typically get over 10 targets with Aaron Rodgers. Last week, Devontae Adams had 12, multiple games over 10 since he came to New York. Garrett Wilson, again, multiple games over 10, even with Devontae Adams in the lineup. So I would lower expectations for these guys. They are low in wide receiver twos for me uh, against the Dolphins, who are actually, you know, a decent matchup. Uh, as in their secondary is pretty good. So look, you can start them because of the amount of buys and everything that we're dealing with, but just lower your expectations. One of them is probably going to pop off. The other, you're going to be upset that you started. And for those teams out there who have both of them, I'm sorry, because that sucks. There's no way around it. On the opposite side of the ball, I do think you can continue to start Tyreek Hill. He's been a must start for us. 
you know, for about three or four weeks in a row now. You know, the target share is not what it used to be. Jonu Smith is clearly the tight end one, which is really frustrating to see. But we know Tyreek Hill on any given play can break it for a touchdown. And he seems like the most reliable name, especially when you have the options of him or Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle is a spot start. Think of Jalen Waddle the same way you think of Jamison Williams. But unfortunately, he's a little bit more bust than boom like Jamison Williams has been this year. But if you want to infuse your lineup with that sort of upside, you know, go crazy. But unfortunately, right now, this Dolphins offense looks like John U. Smith and Devon A. Chan. And outside of that, it's kind of each and every week. You know, let's see what happens, which is frustrating to see. Uh, but it's not a good matchup either for these guys. The Jets are the third worst matchup for fantasy football. So again, lower your expectations. If you get 15 points from a Waddle or a Tyreek Hill, you should be happy with that. Third matchup we'll look at here is the Falcons at the Vikings. I am so excited about this game. This has got to be the game of the week. Maybe there's a different game, but this is my game of the week, all right? Because we got Kirko Thuggins going back to Minnesota, all right, where he had so much success. And I know the crowd's going to show him a bunch of love. There's no reason for them not to. And the other reason I'm excited about this matchup is because it is the best matchup for wide receivers with the Falcons and the second best matchup for wide receivers with the Vikings. Both teams are top two in points allowed to the fantasy wide receiver position. This entire matchup is everything you would dream of for fantasy football, right? Drake London, absolutely a must start, a top eight wide receiver for me in my rankings this week. Darnell Mooney, I think he will bounce back. He's had a great season, but two back-to-back -back games where he's been relatively in check. I think they're going to need him against the Vikings. It's a great offense, a great defense. They're going to need both Mooney and Drake London. I mean, remember that one Thursday night game where Drake London and Darnell Mooney both had over 10 targets? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it wouldn't blow my mind if that was the outcome in this game. I think it could be a really high-paced, exciting game game and on the opposite side of the ball of course you're going to start justin jefferson one of the best wide receivers in the nfl in the best matchup for fantasy football but i also think jordan addison is going to be a must start as well you know given the amount of players that are no longer available due to buys or injuries and given the matchup the best matchup in fantasy football again i think this could be a barn burner you know think about you know not to the same extent but almost like what we saw with browns broncos on thursday night football those are the kind of vibes i'm getting we don't have to worry about weather because it's in a dome in Minnesota. Two great offenses with good quarterbacks that can move the ball down the field. I mean, I'm really excited about this one, and maybe I'm going to jinx it here, but I think we could see the most wide receiver points in fantasy football this week total in this matchup right here. So chase this matchup. I will be in, in my lineups, in my DFS, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. All right, moving on to the Saints at Giants. 40 and a half point over under, the second lowest over under of the week. So we went from one of the most exciting matchups of the week to one of the least exciting matchups of the week. Look, what can I say about MVS? I mean, at this point, he joins the Saints in week, I believe, nine or 10, and he has had a touchdown in every game as a Saint. He's had four touchdowns in the last three games. Every game as a Saint, he's had a touchdown. He just seems to find a way into the end zone. He is the... Rashid Shahid replacement for Derek Carr and Derek Carr is loving it. I don't understand it, but it's working. So if you need a desperation, Jamison Williams, Jalen Waddle type of upside play, I'm going to put MVS in that category too. Um, now it's not a great matchup against the Giants, but we have seen, you know, wide receivers go off against this team uh, at different parts of the season. On the opposite side of the ball, Malik Neighbors is the only guy that you can start with any sort of confidence. You know, the good news is they are targeting him consistently each and every game, averaging about 12 targets per game since the bye week, since they let go of Daniel Jones. It's a good matchup, a top 10 matchup for wide receivers against the Saints as well. So we are definitely going to put him out there with confidence. In fact, in this game, Malik Neighbors is the one pass catcher I have really any confidence in at all. Moving on to the Panthers at the Eagles. Okay, so... 45 and a half point over under that's fine but the largest spread of the week in favor of the eagles and look i get it nobody's more excited about the bryce young kind of bounce back than than myself i have so much stock of bryce young in dynasty leagues i loved watching him out of alabama it's it's an awesome story it's great to see but i'm a little bit concerned about a potential crash and burn scenario here in week number 14 the eagles are the worst matchup for your wide receiver in fantasy football. They are one of the best defenses in the NFL, point blank period. They're tough to run against, tough to throw against. They're really 
figuring everything out at the right time. It's kind of like the opposite of what happened last year for the Eagles. They fell apart to end the season. Now they're really figuring it out towards the end of the year. And I am just really concerned that Bryce Young and this entire offense could completely fumble the bag. Now, here's the deal. If you're going to start any wide receiver for the Panthers, it's Adam Thielen, right? Who is finally fully healthy, coming off a game where he had 10 targets, caught eight of them for 99 yards and a touchdown. Should have been two touchdowns, to be honest. I don't know how that touchdown last week wasn't called in the back of the end zone. But regardless, I do think Adam Thielen is a name that you can start because he does play in the slot. So he's not so concerning as like your outside wide receivers would be. Like I'm, I'm not very excited about Xavier Leggett or your David Moores. But here's the concern about Adam Thielen. If Jalen Coker is back this week, how does he impact Adam Thielen? Jalen Coker plays a lot of time in the slot as well. So what does that mean for Adam Thielen? And does it just make the target share even more confusing? So look, I think 90% of people have a better option than Adam Thielen this week. I want to ride that train with you guys, but not when that train, uh, the next stop is Philadelphia. I just, I'm not sure I can stay on that train at this point. Now on the opposite side of the ball, of course you can start AJ Brown. Of course you can start Devonta Smith. At the time of recording this, I don't know if Devonta Smith will play. He's already missed two weeks with that hamstring injury. I think he should be able to be healthy enough to go this week, but that's something that we'll have to monitor throughout the course of the week. Now, the good news for pass catchers in Philadelphia is that Dallas Goddard is not going to play this week. I mean, they could play some on short-term IR. Now, why is that good news? Well, that's good news because the Eagles are not throwing the ball very much. They're actually one of the, the lowest teams in um, passing attempts over expectation. They're running the ball a lot more than anyone anticipated. They're throwing the ball a lot less than anyone anticipated. And that's really hurting names like A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith, specifically Devonta Smith. So with another pass catcher out of the way, that could be beneficial for these guys in Philadelphia. But I'm just not sure how much they'll be needed. So it's a little bit concerning. Sixth matchup we'll look at here is the Browns at the Steelers. 41 and a half point over under. This is the third lowest over under of the week. But I don't care. Because we are starting Jerry Judy with the utmost confidence. All right, let's look at this. The most games in NFL history with 450 passing guards and four touchdowns. Peyton Manning with three. Jameis Winston with three. That was the most Jameis Winston game we've ever seen on Monday Night Football. He throws over 450 yards, four touchdowns, and then every interception in the book, every pick six in the book, it was back to 30-30 Jameis Winston. But for fantasy football, this is what we love. We absolutely love this scenario. Just let him go out there and just throw the ball all over the field. I don't care if you turn the ball over 17 times a game. As long as you keep slinging that thing, Jameis, we're going to be best friends. Jerry Judy, a must start for me. My wide receiver, 26. Here are every wide receiver's names that have had at least five games of 70 plus receiving guards since week eight. Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. End of list. That is it. Those are the only guys. And by the way, Jerry Judy is second in receiving guards this year in a single game, only behind Jamar Chase. Now, you can also start Cedric Tillman if you want. You can start Elijah Moore if you want. It's technically not a good matchup, but they're going to throw the ball enough for these guys to be spot starts, flexible names. But I think it's very clear at this point that Jerry Judy is the wide receiver one for the Cleveland Browns. Now, on the opposite side of the ball, we're going to make this very simple. We'll start George Pickens, a must start for us for ever since Russell Wilson became the starter. It's a top seven matchup in fantasy football. And of course, George Pickens is going to be out there. He's one of the best wide receivers right now uh, for fantasy football. So reliable each and every week, uh, getting the moon balls. It's a perfect kind of mind meld with him and Russell Wilson right now. Seventh matchup we'll look at here is the Raiders at the Bucks, 44 and a half point over under. The Bucs are favored by about seven points. That's the second largest spread of the week. I think Jacoby Myers is a must start for sure. My wide receiver 25 this week, the wide receiver 22 on the season. Coming off a game where he had 11 targets in week 13. The week before that, he had 15 targets. So Jacoby Myers out of that slot, playing the Bucs who are the sixth best matchup for your wide receiver. Remember last week, Adam Thielen out of the slot. Had a great game. I think Jacoby Myers could do the same thing. I think he has a real shot of over 20 PPR points. A must start for me this week. I'm not going to really kind of, you know, dip my toe into the Trey Tucker pool or the DJ Turner too. I just, I just don't think it's worth chasing that with Aiden O'Connell. On the opposite side of the ball, it's also very clear. You can start Mike Evans and we don't want to start anyone else. 118 yards versus the Panthers 
for Mike Evans in week 13. Let's hope that Aiden O'Connell can keep this a competitive game because if he does, Mike Evans is going to be a league winner, a week winner here in week number 14 on track to 1,000. I mean, we got to get him there, right? Eighth matchup of the week, Jags at the Titans. The lowest over under of the week. Okay, so that's a little bit hard to hear. The Titans are favored by three and a half points. No Legereus Sneed makes the secondary much more attainable to start someone against, right? Legereus Sneed, if you guys remember, at the beginning of the season, really made the secondary lock down. I mean, he was a huge impact because multiple years before this year, the Titans have been a great matchup for fantasy wide receivers. Well, Legereus Sneed comes in, he kind of changes things, but now he's on IR, and this defense has been super vulnerable against wide receivers recently. Just like last week, Terry McLaurin has two touchdowns against this team, a whole bunch of yardage. So I do think that Brian Thomas is a startable name. My wide receiver, 27, he came in last week, had 10 targets, caught four of them for 76 yards and a touchdown. The touchdown did come with Mac Jones playing the quarterback position. So even though Mac Jones will start for this team, there is a lot of, you know, I guess expectancy still for a talent like Brian Thomas, who they want to feed. Now, Parker Washington is the ultimate desperation play this week, all right? In fact, you have two of those guys, Parker Washington and Nick westbrook Akini. They are both the ultimate desperation plays in fantasy football. For Parker Washington, he had six catches, 103 yards, and a touchdown over 24 PPR points last week. And he has kind of this inbuilt chemistry with Mac Jones because they were both kind of secondary players playing with that second team in practice. They already have that chemistry. It was obvious to see when Mac Jones came onto the field and there's no one else outside of Brian Thomas in this wide receiver room. So there's enough to go around for a team that's probably going to be coming back from behind. On the opposite side of the ball, you can start um, Calvin Ridley. This is the fourth best matchup for wide receivers. Calvin has had a couple bust games in the last couple weeks, but I do think there are boom games upcoming. And as far as Nick Westbrook Akini, I mean, what do I say about the guy at this point, right? He has a touchdown. All right, check this out, guys. All right, he has a touchdown in seven out of his last eight games. And he has eight touchdowns in the last eight weeks. All the guy does is, is catch tutties. This is MVS. This is what Rashid Shahid was. And it'd be awesome if they targeted him outside of just those deep balls. But if you want to infuse your upside with some lineup, like we've been talking about, this is a guy that you can do that with. All right, moving on to the start of the 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time slate of games. Seahawks at Cardinals, 44 and a half point over under. The closest spread of the week. This game is very important for the NFC West division. 49ers, you know, are, are really, really struggling right now. And whoever wins this has a legit shot to win the entire division. DK Metcalf, you know, uh, he tweaked his knee. We'll have to monitor that throughout the course of the week. But assuming he plays, he's going to be a must start for me, um, as well as Jackson Smith and Jigba. Both of these guys, regardless of D if DK plays or not, they'll both be absolute must starts. Jason is a wide receiver eight on the season. And he's had some incredible blow up games recently. So we're going to continue to ride uh, that option here. And on the opposite side of the ball, it's really Marvin Harrison Jr. And that's that's it. Had 12 targets last week. So it's good to see them wanting to get him so involved. But man, it'd be awesome if he and Kyler Murray could just get on the same page. Because right now, they're clearly not on the same page. And this team is suffering because of it. But we're going to start uh, Marvin Harrison. One of my hot takes of the week last week was that he was going to have a huge game in fantasy against the Vikings. He did so. I'm going to tell you again this week in a top 12 matchup against the Seahawks that you can start him. All right, moving on. We've got Bills at Rams. This is tied for the second highest over under of the week at 49 and a half points. The Bills are favored by about four and a half points as well. Now, as far as the Bills go, if you're going to start one of these names, it's going to be Khalil Shakir. I don't trust Keon Coleman, who's dealing with that wrist injury. I don't trust Amari Cooper, who's been completely unreliable. I mean, the guy has about 10 points total since week eight. That's not an exaggeration. He has about 10 points total since week eight. It's been really frustrating to watch. Maybe this is the week that he breaks out, but I'm not going to put him into my lineups with my fantasy hopes on the line. And as far as Curtis Samuel goes, not playable. Um, Keon Coleman, again, what is his role going to be after that wrist injury? So if you have to start a name, it's definitely Khalil Shakir. And on the opposite side of the ball, we're going to continue to trust Cooper Cup. It was a bad game last week. I have to give it to him, but you know, even superstars, you know, have a bad game, you know, here and there. We're going to start Puka Nakua. We're going to start Cooper Cup. Both of those guys are top 12 plays for me here in week number 14. I'd rather start Puka if I had both of those names, but they're both guys that I feel like we can confidently start. And the Rams should be, you know, behind in this game. Matthew Stafford did su suffer an injury recently, but there are reports that he will be fine. 
So look, I definitely get people's concerns, but we're going to continue to start both of these guys with confidence. Moving on to the Bears at the 49ers, uh, 44 and a half point over under. Currently, the 49ers are favored. I'm not sure if that will change, you know, as more news comes out about Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, you know, he's not going to play. But it, apparently, Brock Purdy is going to practice the entire week. So that's a great sign for guys like Juwan Jennings and Debo Samuel. But to be honest, I just don't trust Debo Samuel at this point. Like, he's done nothing to make me trust him. Three weeks in a row, under seven PPR points. Three weeks in a row, under 25 receiving yards. The longest stretch of his career under that number, by the way. I am totally aware at any point he could blow up. Maybe that's this week, but it's not a good matchup. The Bears are the fifth worst matchup for your wide receiver in fantasy football. So if I'm, if I'm going to trust anybody, it's going to be Juwan Jennings, who has that inbuilt chemistry already with Brock Purdy. And in games where weather isn't a problem, we have seen Juwan Jennings be very, very good for fantasy football. So if you're going to start any 49er, to me, it's Juwan Jennings. I just, I cannot trust Ebo Samuel at this point. And on the opposite side of the ball, since they fired Shane Waldron in Chicago, these wide receivers have been completely unleashed, man. It's been so fun to watch. DJ Moore, back-to-back -back weeks, over 23 PPR points. He had a 16-target game against Detroit in Week 13. We're going to continue to uh, you know, ride him here in Week 14, as well as Keenan Allen, back-to-back -back weeks, over 22 P PPR points, excuse me, three touchdowns in two weeks. Now, here's what I'll say. It's technically a terrible matchup against the 49ers. But again, thinking about game script, I feel like the Bears are going to have to throw the ball for the majority of this game. So that alone makes me confident start to start those two names up top. As far as Roma Dunze goes, like he's getting the targets. He's just not on the same page with Caleb Williams right now. So he's not a startable name in my humble opinion. All right, moving on to Sunday night football. We've got the Chargers at the Chiefs. 42 and a half point over under. Huge game for the division. Technically, the Chargers could still could still win the division, I believe, if the math checks out. A lot would have to happen, include winning this game. Lab McConkey is going to be a must start for me. The Chiefs defense started off the year as the worst defense for your wide receiver to face. Now they are middle of the pack. You can throw on this team right now. It's strange. They're definitely being kind of exposed each and every week, but you absolutely can throw on this team right now. I mean, we've seen that each and every week in the last four or five weeks. And Lab McConkey, I mean, is turning into a superstar in front of our eyes. The wide receiver 15 on the season, a my guy before the year. So I'm loving this. Um, absolutely incredible. Had over 100 yards in the first half last week versus the Atlanta Falcons and then dealt with an injury. So we'll have to wait and kind of see what's going on with that knee. According to Jim Harbaugh, he says he is working through a couple of things. They're going to evaluate him as the week progresses. Um, talking about this week, he said, we'll see. So look, I'm assuming that Lab McConkey is going to play. If he doesn't, you can't start him. If he does play, he's got to be in your lineups. And on, you know, the other side of the field, you got Quentin Johnston, um, you know, as far as like playing outside, uh, he's, he's boom or bust, right? If he gets a touchdown, great. If he doesn't, then you won't have wanted to play him. With touchdowns in, in a game, he's averaging about 16 PPR points. Without touchdowns in a game, he's averaging about three and a half points. So he is a definition of boom bust. And then as far as the Kansas City Chiefs go, if you're going to start any wide receiver, I would start DeAndre Hopkins, but I still don't have like a ton of confidence in him myself. So I would just kind of lower your expectations with these Kansas City Chiefs wide receivers. It is a good matchup. Technically, the Chargers are a top 10 matchup for your wide receiver. So again, you can put DeAndre Hopkins out there. You know, he seems to be the wide receiver one, but some weeks Xavier Worthy gets a little more work. You know, they're starting to work in Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, we're seeing their tight end too, who his name is kind of skipping my brain right now. Um, Noah Fant, not Noah Fant, Noah Gray, rather. He's getting some work as well in the red zone. So it's a little bit frustrating to own DeAndre Hopkins, but if you're going to start one of those names, it would be him. Xavier Worthy is kind of like this, you know, like we said with Jamison Williams and MVS, he's he's this boom bust player that you can throw into your lineup and kind of hope for the best. If, if you like to party, if you like to, you know, let, let's just see what happens with this fun young rookie, you can put him in there. But I would say about 85 to 90% of you guys have a better option in fantasy this week. Last game we'll talk about here is Monday Night Football. Bengals at Cowboys, 49 and a half point over under, which is tied for the second highest over under of the week. So we should see a ton of fantasy points in this matchup. In fact, I imagine a lot of you guys, your entire fantasy life will come down to this game on Monday Night Football, right? Whether you get into the playoffs or whether your season is over. And it's a great game 
uh, for us to kind of wait on our, our fate, if you will. You've got names like Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and CeeDee Lamb, right? Big names like Joe Burrow and Chase Brown and all these high level names that you can kind of bet on to get into the playoffs. And as far as CeeDee Lamb goes, if he plays, I'm going to put him out there. You know, the good news is Cooper Rush has been serviceable and it's also a very good matchup. The Bengals are a top five matchup for your fantasy wide receiver. So he's definitely a playable name. I, I do have a, a relative amount of confidence in him this week. And on the opposite side of the ball, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, both top seven wide receivers for me this week. The reality is T. Higgins is averaging more targets per game than Jamar Chase when both of these guys play. So both are just as reliable as each other as long as they can stay healthy. We know T. Higgins has a chance of putting up 150 and two tuds any given week. The Cowboys are kind of in the middle of the pack. What you have to hope for here in this matchup is that the Cowboys can keep this a competitive game. We do not want a game where it's a blowout and Chase and T. Higgins become kind of irrelevant. That is not what you want in this matchup. But the good news for these Bengals is Joe Burrow's playing probably the best football of any quarterback in the past four games. In the past four games, just four games, he has over 1,300 passing yards and 15 touchdowns. Insane. I mean, if he had even an average defense, this is one of the best teams in the NFL if he had an average defense. So at least that is going for you in this matchup. I appreciate you guys for watching the video. Do me a favor, hit that like button, show some love. Subscribe if you like our content. Last thing I'll say here is if you have a tough start sit decision this week, go ahead and check out the pinned comment. You can reach me at any time on our website. Uh, and ask me a question there. And while you're over there, if you don't have a free account yet, you can use our promo code LAND, L-A-N-D. When you sign up with our promo code uh, for a free account, you get the uh, team analyzer, the flock calculator, and the expert consensus rankings all as a thank you for signing up for a free account. I appreciate you for watching the video. Good luck this week. The running back start sits is already out on the channel, so make sure you go check that out. And good luck. I hope you get into the playoffs if this week is you know, kind of your determining week. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh.